I was dealing with stuff. Uh, getting some stuff set up. I have sound alerts now, so that's pretty cool. So if you scroll down to my panel section, do one sound so far. But hey, I got it set up, so that's what Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Oh my God. And, yeah, uh, we're playing Dream Daddy today. We're going to continue with the Hugo rep. Um, and just fair warning, I had some pain medicine kick in just now, and I am loopy. <laughs> but I'll try my best. Okay. Let's get started. Nice male person slides a couple of letters in a large yellow envelope to the slot. Takes a couple of tries for them to get in. Hey, my coupons. Take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay. Just thought you'd want this big envelope we got from HIA. All right. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horny, Horn Institute for the Arts? Not horny. <laughs> I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Yeah. Father, please! I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. I forgot to drag stream right. Whoops. Right. There we go. And the suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. I mean his face is unreadable. Hmm. I can't believe this. Oh, honey. It's okay if you didn't. Yeah. I got in! Oh! I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god. I can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. Just been given a sandwich. Thank you. You're a great student, and you nailed that interview. And your photography is incredible. Oh no! Wait, Dad. <sighs> I know this one's really expensive, and it's so far away. I think for a moment, HIA was one of the most e more expensive schools that Amanda applied to. But I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we'll make it work. Mm -hmm. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Yes. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice. Wherever you want. <laughs> Wherever. <laughs> Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. Could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad. You know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. Hey! And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID, and... Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know. I'm just excited. Did I mention the students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we all get 
the professional photo editing software for free. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it in between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. Speaking of which, let me take a bite of my sandwich. It's large, large sandwich. Oh god. Oh no! I got ketchup on my mouse pad. I'll never recover from this. Yeah, that wasn't as, like, smooth of a bite as I was hoping. I think I'm gonna have to wait to eat this, damn it. God, I really did just get tomato everywhere. Whoops. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with a similar major and interests. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Best friends forever. Dragon I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. But don't get me started on bad roommates. Uh -huh. Oh no. Oh. Bundy Baguettes! Thank you for joining the choir! Hell yeah! Hey there! Thank you so much. <laughs> we didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig bought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Ah. How are you doing today, Baguettes? Carl rules. Yes! Oh, they let you have animals in the dorm if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forage one. I think I would get a rabbit, or maybe a snake, or maybe both. Would a snake eat a rabbit, though? Yes. Oh boy. I think I'll leave that all up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Mm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? N no. Mm. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horn, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. Oh god. She got so weathered. Pleased to be here. How's it going? Pretty good. And I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I like just woke up, <laughs> took some medicine, and now I'm playing, and now I'm like, ugh. But I still like it. I still like starting my day off with a stream. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's gonna be some treacherous ice roads to cross. Don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. Aww. My, my eyes immediately well with tears. Thank you. Huh. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person, and I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're gonna make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's gonna make it taste sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. <laughs> Love you, kiddo. Love you, too, Pops. Oh, so sweet. Welcome. You've got dads. Oh. Serenity, listen. This is you from the past. Whoa, how'd this happen? I figure you're trying to reply to this because I know myself, but this is an automated message from earlier this morning when it was socially unacceptable to go out and buy ice cream. I forgot I did that. I forgot how I did that as well. The future's amazing. Listen, life is short and ice cream should always be acceptable, but unfortunately, this isn't the society we live in. And it's less the society we live in and more me projecting my own anxiety about being judged onto others. 
but you know what I mean. By the time you read this, it is most it is a certain time of day in which nobody will bat an eye at you for going out and buying ice cream. You know what to do. Be good, me. Buy that ice cream! Oh. I didn't know it was like a... I didn't know it was like a whole thing! Oh my gosh! I thought it was just like a little joke. So thirsty. You know what? I burned a treat. On the way home, I decided to stop off and grab some ice cream, which I fully planned to eat directly from the tub. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out which type of ice cream I'd like to eat directly from the tub. Rocky Road? Pistachio? Oh, Amanda's probably going to want some too. Better get two tubs. She loves cookie dough ice cream, right? Hey, mister. I turn around and see Ernest, leaning up against the wall of the convenience store. Ernest? You're cool, right? Oh man, is this kid about to sell me drugs? Popping open a cold one, I see. <laughs> yeah, popping up a, a, a cold, caffeine-free Diet Coke. <laughs> Truly the drink of champions. Uh, I'm cool, but I don't see why that has to do with anything. Well, if you're cool, you help me out, right? Help you out? There's no fire involved, is there? Just clouds. So if I give you $20, will you buy me e-liquid? Ernest, what's e-liquid? It's like a uh, Gatorade, you know, electrolyte juice. It'll get, I'd get it myself, but I'm banned from here for trying to run a grift on the cashier. A classic fiddle game. You know the deal. Oh, if you're talking about a balanced electrolytes, then I got you, little buddy. And I don't know, uh, I don't know you played the fiddle. Just ask the clerk for Blue Crayon's Apple Vortex. He'll know what it is. Uh-oh. I pick up a tub of pistachio ice cream for myself and a tub of cookie dough for Amanda. I search around for some Blue Crayon Void star Starer, but I can't seem to find any. Turn to the cashier. Say, where's your finest e-liquid? behind the counter. You got an ID? First of all, my daughter is older than you. Second of all, I'm flattered. I switched shampoos recently. Is that taking some years off? Look, you need to be 21 to buy vape juice. Your hair doesn't look a day over 20. Wait a minute. Are you trying to butter me up so I get to get me to buy more ice cream? Because it's working. I glance outside and spot Ernest staring at me. Double wait a minute. So you're telling me e-liquid is not a sports drink? It's for vaping. Ernest is watching us intently through the window. I better go give that kid a piece of my mind. I see. Okay, look. I'm going to pretend that you didn't try to trick me into buying you the old Baphomet's cough syrup and then go inside here to purchase my ice cream. I won't tell your dad if you promise to scram. And stop vaping. You'll get popcorn lung. <laughs> What if I give you 25? Go home, Ernest. As I'm walking back inside, Ernest calls after me. You can get popcorn lung from microwavable popcorn, you know! I no longer trust this child, but the mere notion strikes fear into my heart. I go back inside to complete my purchase with a good cashier. Thank you, kind sir, for your time and generous hair compliments. You got it, bub. I glance out the window a while to see Ernest still outside. Looks like he's talking to some other poor sap. I guess I should go outside and save this other guy some grief. Wait a second. That's definitely a cop. Oh boy. I grab my tub of ice cream and bolt outside. Ernest is already face down on the hood of a squad car. Oh no! Free Ernest! Free my man Ernest! Ernest, did you seriously try and get a cop to buy you e-liquid? You know this kid? I'm friends with this dad. I gotta... <gasps> My, my daughter goes to school with him or never met him in my life. Uh, I'm friends with his dad. Uh, yeah, we live in the same cul-de-sac. I know his dad. Listen, he's a good kid, and I'm this boy's father. I turn around and see Robert walking up the street towards the convenience store. You are not this boy's father. Uh. Ernest, what are you doing? I want a lawyer. I love how all the dads have come together to protect Ernest from going to prison. First of all, good first instinct. 
Remember that you're not required to answer any questions from a police officer without a lawyer present. You're this boy's father? I... Yes, sir. Ernest likes to lash out at me like this ever since the accident. Oh, um... I don't like talking about it. So that's fine. Robert gets a wistful twinkle in his eyes. It all started seven summers ago. My hair was long then. New metal was still in style. Ernest and I were down in Florida Swampland scavenging for it. Sir, I can leave uh I can leave you to take it from here. Oh. Sounds good. Thanks, officer. Oh. Ernest, come along now. You'll be cleaning grout from the rain gutter for a week thanks to this transgression. The police officer gets in the car and drives off. I'm stunned by how cool Robert was was just there. Thanks. I wanna say Richard <laughs> Ouch. Damn. Oh. Don't mention it, Hemingway. Got in trouble plenty of times in my life, just trying to do a good deed for the day. Will you buy me e-liquid if I give you $20? God damn it. God damn it, Ernest. Child, I will end you. Uh. <coughs> Hold on. I gotta save that. That is now saved. I needed that screenshot. I really did. Hmm. Hey, Serenity, will you walk Ernest home with me? Sure. Oh. Ernest runs ahead, presumably so he won't be seen with us, which is a thing I think kids do. He reminds me a lot of myself when I was his age. Huh. Well, maybe I wasn't as dumb. Seems like he tortures his dad. Hey. What the hell just popped up on my screen? What the fuck was that? What? Okay. <laughs> Seems like he tortures just about everyone. But he stole- he even stole your wallet. What? No he did- I pat my back pocket. I pat the rest of my pockets. He stole my wallet. Mm. Why are you doing this to yourself? I- What? Oh. Robert points at my tubs of ice cream. <laughs> One of them's for Amanda. Hey. I have no qualms with the quantity of ice cream you've purchased. It's a perfectly respectable amount of ice cream. It's the quality I'm talking about. Oh. You work hard, Serenity. You're a good dad. Don't you think you deserve top shelf ice cream? But these were on sale. <laughs> Same. Oh. oh, indeed. If you're going to treat yourself, go big or go home. Real vanilla bean. Real pistachio. You deserve it. I agree. I deserve it. <laughs> I love that little running animation. We arrive at the cul-de-sac. Ernest runs into his home. Oh. That boy's the reason we don't have prizes and cereals anymore. <laughs> hey. Catch you around, Serenity. Robert tosses me my wallet. I catch it with a surprised look on his mm. face. On my face. I stole it back. Mm. Keep it in your front pocket or use a chain and like the back of your... Ugh. Or use a chain like back in your ska days. Smell you later. I can't believe you just said smell you later to me. See ya, Robert. I go back inside my home, ready to spend the rest of the night with two tubs of ice cream and also Amanda. That was so cute. I've never seen that before. Welcome. You've got dads. That's just like a, that's just a super cute aside. I love it. Oh, so thirsty. So sweaty. Jeez. Can you just continually go on dates with all dads? No, I don't think you can. Okay, continuing Hugo. Hugo date time. Where did my little... There we go. I have too many goddamn windows open. I'm just trying to layer them properly. There we go. There we go. I got it now. I should take Hugo up on his offer to hang out. I had a lot of fun with him at the aquarium. I type out a message to him on dad book. 
Hey, still want a cheese board? Hugo responds within a few minutes. Oh, Colin is being a humongous shithead. He won't stop sending me the same picture of Jackie Chan in a mesh shirt to the printer. And it's a nice picture, but it's wasting all my paper. Whoops, sorry. Meant that for another teacher. But seriously, he's insufferable. There's pictures of Jackie Chan everywhere. Oh. I type back. Save a couple for me. My Jackie Chan scrapbook is a little light on content, and I think that would really round it out. Ha! Let me get back to you after class ends. I stand up from the computer and stretch. Well, I guess there's only one thing to do now. Take a nap. Dad nap! Ha! I was alright. I hop on the couch. Ooh, I hop on the couch and turn on some antique road warriors for background noise. I got this ornate cabinet from a lawn sale for $5 in 1982. To be told that it once belonged to a Confederate general is a huge surprise. This will feed my tribe for weeks. I really like the idea. I really like the way the appraiser's voice echoes through the mouthpiece of his leather armor bondage gear. Maybe this bleh, maybe this is that ASMR thing Amanda keeps telling me about. I drift off to sleep. Incredible. I wish these shows were real. I know they're like a combination of several shows, but I kind of just wish those combo shows were real. I want to see Paranormal Ice Road Truckers so bad. Uh, hey, sorry about that. Colin's in the principal's office now. He says he knows Jackie Chan personally, and that Jackie Chan won't be happy to hear about this. I was jolted away by a dad book message from Hugo. I get off work in a little while, and I continue to be very serious about cheese boards. I fumble out a reply. Yeah, so am I. You and I work out the details, and we'll set to meet him in a few hours. Amanda walks in the door, just as I'm about to leave. What's up, Buttercup? Hmm. Just getting home from school? Where are you going? Oh, I have a meeting with the board. The board? Is it the cheese board? Um, a cheese board is what I meant. I'm getting, I'm getting cheese with your teacher. Will you be able to fend for yourself until dinner time? Hmm. Yeah, I'll live. But only if you can talk him into going easy on me for that final. Sorry, buddy. That ball's in your court. What's in my court, you ask? Just a variety of delicious cheeses, meats, and their accompaniment, accompanying accompanying crackers maybe some olives a little bit of fig jam Dad. yes 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 i get it you're excited about cheese <laughs> sweetie you'll get it one day but now i gotta see a man about some manchego Mon man manchego manchego i really feel that though i used to think cheese words were so lame and now that i'm like old i'm like oh damn charcuterie board it's a real party now Please leave. <laughs> I walk into a quaint French diner and Hugo waves me in, uh, waves me down to a booth in the corner. He looks pretty tired. Long day? Uh. Every day is a long day when you teach middle schoolers. Oh. Colin started a gambling ring. The pictures of Jackie Chan were just a cover. He's bartending in those little rubber rubber band bracelets that are also that are also shapes. Sorry, my webcam's kind of blocking the screen. He's bartering. Bartending. What the fuck? <laughs> this is a good time to remind everyone to have fucking dyslexia. Is that the one that parents think means sex stuff? Those ones, yeah. But the reports are just the sensationalist news media capitalizing on the fear of suburban parents, as usual. Uh... At least I hope. <laughs> Yikes! Oh, right now I'm very ready for some uh, to uh, for us for a some fine, what for some fine wine. I have just typo and delicious cheese. A waitress stops by and takes our order for the biggest cheese plate you have. For the love of God, just please put cheese in my mouth and recommends us some wine. Do you two want a scar a scorecard for trivia? There's trivia. Yep, we're starting in a few minutes. Pretty much everyone here is playing. Oh! We love to play. Right, Serenity? I am so bad at trivia. 
I'm gonna be real, I don't know anything. You think with as long as I'd been alive, I'd know something, but no. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, sure. The waitress hands us a scorecard and a few pencils before leaving. Might not be much of help here. I'm not good at being smart, I guess. <laughs> Same. Come on. I doubt it'll be too hard. Serenity! Oh, everyone's here. Oh my god. What? <laughs> everyone's here. I turn to see Matt and Brian here with their daughters, looking like they're ready for trivia. They come up to our table to greet us. Hey guys, you all here for the old question and answers game? Oh. Yep, we come here every week, but Brian and Daisy carry the team. Uh, Carmen Cita and I are just here for the cheese. Uh -huh. Provolone 2, Lost in New York, has been a reigning champions for the last month. Man, Brian's great at trivia too. That raises the stakes. Great name though. Solid team name. That's Carmesita's claim to fame. It hurts me how good I am at puns. <laughs> like father, like daughter. Oh. You guys gonna try and give us a run for our money? Ah. We'll see what we can do. I'm just here for the cheese too. We'll see what we can do to not hurt your feelings too bad or I will destroy you. Uh, we'll see what we can do to not hurt your feelings too bad. The cheese will taste so much better with a side of victory. Hugh and I bump fists. Tag team champions. Mm. We'll have to think of a good team name, but I think this will be fun. Good luck! Brian, Matt, and their daughters head back to their table. Well, I guess we need a name. Um. Got any good ideas? Easy breezy beautiful. Parvati like it's 1999. Ah, real monsters are Craigslist Swiss connections. Um, I kind of like Easy Breezy Beautiful. Easy Breezy Beautiful? That'll do just nicely. The... Sorry. The way just comes by with our cheese board and we revel in its glory. Already I can see a piece of cheddar with my name on it. I pair it with some strawberry preserve and slide into dairy-induced ecstasy. There's such a fine variety of cheese and char charcuterie that I'm positively overwhelmed. A quick dip into the seasoned nuts, a slice of savory yet salty gouda, or perhaps a focaccia crisp topped with honey and goat cheese. Oh, hello chicken boy, thanks for the alert. I'm so happy. Hugo raises his glass at me. Ah! Cheers to cheese! Hey, hey! What? <laughs> a middle-aged man in a backwards cap, sunglasses, and cargo shorts jogs out of the back with a frantic energy of a DJ radio. A DJ radio? Radio DJ. Hey, Serenity. What's up, baguettes? What's going on? Everybody ready for some trivia? The restaurant cheers. Oh man, looks like everyone's really into it. That's what I like to hear. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Quizmaster Quinn. My actual name's Richard, but I like the original, uh, the alliteration. Quick question, do you have a Twitch link on your Twitter? I do, right? I do. Wait, do I? Do I? Um, I normally put it on the replies, but I guess I should fucking put the thing in the you're the first person to call me baguettes. Really? Interesting. Here, thanks for pointing that out, by the way. I'm gonna fix that right now. Thank you. 
save. Yeah, that'll work. I ha it's because I had to type your name in to find you. Ah, I'm sorry. But I fixed it now, so we're, we're good now. I'm just dumb. <laughs> Oh, my throat is so dry. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I see some of you brought your children here tonight. That's cool. My children won't speak to me. Oh. Hey! <laughs> I'm just joking around. Classic Quizmaster Quinn humor. It's actually my wife that won't speak to me. She doesn't want kids. Oh. Let's get into some questions. First category is literature. Excellent. You know who loved literature? My dead father. I looked up to him so much. More jokes. Classic quiz master quips. I'm just trying to keep it light here, folks. Just like I thought my wife was the light of my life. Hugo, you you got this literature stuff, oh. right? Does Franz Kafka have an irrational fear of one day waking up as a large, grotesque, insect-like creature? Yes. This is the continent that encompasses the realms of Gondor, Rohan, Mordor, and Lothurin. Other notable sites include Esga- Oh, God. Other. What is the elfish name for this continent? I'm using a cheat sheet for this part because I don't know what the fuck's going on. Indoor. Who is the writer that created Tarzan and John Carter of Mars? Edgar Rice Burroughs. Correct. Edmund Dantes is better known as this man. I actually did know this one. The Couch of Monte Cristo. Just because I know about the musical. Quizmaster walks around the room. I think he's doing crowd work. He stops by mine and Hugo's table. Oh. Lovely model, by the way. Thank you. It's ready to just have a lovely model. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm sweating profusely. <laughs> just really, really going through it right now. I'm like dry and moist at the same time. Throat dry, armpits wet. Whoa, nice cheese plate you got there. Th Thanks. <laughs> Is there any OG why? This medicine I take makes me so sweaty <laughs> for like an hour. I like get really dizzy and then I just start sweating. <laughs> How's that cheese tasting, big guy? Um, good? <laughs> Great! Cheese used to be my favorite food, but I delivered a, a developed a lactose intolerance late in life. I'm sorry to hear that. I also developed cl clinical depression. Oh. <laughs> people don't tell you, to, but people don't tell you to just get over your lactose intolerance, right? Nobody's like, have you tried to exercise and to get rid of your debilitating dairy, al dairy allergy? Or you just need to choose to not let your throat close when you eat free. Well, don't, don't die. Um. This guy has some problems. Anything? Does that scan? I'm trying to workshop my routine here. Quizmaster Quinn walks off to another table. Who wants to start the next round? More cheers from the audience. By the way, y'all, I, uh, I finally got sound alerts set up, which are on my panel, uh, for right now. I'll add some more later, but yeah, you can throw in a couple, a few bits to call me a dumb bitch or something. <laughs> 
And if you have ideas for other, like, sound clips I could use, just let me know. And, uh, I'll probably add them. <laughs> There's just so many good, like, quotes that I really need to... I really need to find my faves, you know? I want to be a little original. The next round is cinema. Oh man, I love movies. Sometimes I retreat into them for days on end because obsessing over a fictional universe is easier than engaging with real emotions and problems. Jesus, dude. I didn't sign up for this. Frodo Baggins, am I right? Is he okay? Um. I think it's just his character, I hope. How's your cinema? Oh. Spotty, I don't know a lot about movies. But if there's any questions about bad horror movies, I can be of service. That's an interesting one. Oh. It's a bit of a guilty pleasure. In Return of the Jedi, what does Luke ask Leia if she remembers? Their mother. Oh, Rex. Dumb bitch. Oh! I can't believe you. Well, that stayed on the screen for a while. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. No, you don't get to gun, point a gun at me. Hold on. Perish. What entertainer makes a fourth wall breaking appearance in the film Gremlins 2? Was Hulk Hogan. Correct. Which of these 80s horror movies dies not. Which of these 80s horror movies dies not feature an Indian burial, burial ground as part of its setting? Oh, does. Does not feature. Okay. Shining within the woods, polarized pet cemetery. Poltergeist. Correct. Seems like we're doing pretty well, but we're neck and neck with Brian and Matt's team. Those guys are pros. Woo. I look over at their table and give them a friendly but competitive nod. I lock eyes with Brian. He gets a much sterner nod. And the next category is wrestling. Okay, we're totally boned. Hugo grabs my oh. arm. Wait, I got this. Huh? Man, you know I would want... You know who I would want to wrestle with? Literally anyone. I crave human interaction. Please put me in a chokehold. Uh-oh. Please, it's been so long since I've been held. Sad Master Quinn. Sad Master Quinn. I can only process my emotions by making jokes out of them. I... Oh. Let's start the quiz! Remember that this is the lightning round. The first people to answer get the points. I look over at Hugo. Hold on. Question one. This is the original name of Stone Cold Steve Austin in his debut for the WWE. Ah. Hugo's hand shoots up. Yes, the enthusiastic one over there. Steve Austin debuted as the ringmaster. Ah. This is correct. Points to Easy Breezy Beautiful. Ah. Next question. The city was the location of the first ever, ever WrestleMania. Oh. Hugo's hand shoots up again. Yes, the one who looks like he has known the answer for his entire life. Oh. The first WrestleMania was held in New York, New York on Madison Square Gardens in 1985. Correct. Another correct answer for Easy Breezy Beautiful. Hugo's destroying these questions. He's so passionate about this. I've never seen him act like this before. It's honestly kind of hot. Jeez. Oh, a tough one. This title match went down in history as the shortest match at WrestleMania to date. Hugo jumps up, more excited than I've ever seen him. Yes. Chava vs. Kane. Incorrect. Oh, sorry, Buckle. That one's incorrect. Uh, the answer is actually Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus at WrestleMania 28. <sighs> no, that's absolutely wrong. The real record is Chavo Guerrero and Kane, WrestleMania 24, March 30th, 2008. Kane took down Chavo with one choke slam and pinned him for three counts. I will not stand for this travesty. Master Quill. 
Hey man, I'm just reading the card here. I don't actually write these. Well, you're still wrong. What are you, my ex-wife? The card erupts in laughter. Hugo blushes and retreats back to his mm -hmm. chair. Fine. Wow. Hugo seemed really fired up about that. Where did he get this encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling? How do you know so much about wrestling? I don't know. Oh, I... You know, I just pick stuff up. <laughs> That sounds suspect, but it seems like he doesn't want to talk about it. I turn my attention back to the quiz master. Ah. All right, all right, all right. Looks like we're down to the final category, and it's a close one between Provolone 2, Lost in New York, Brian and Matt high five, and Easy Breezy Beautiful. Hugh and I high five. We look over to Brian and Matt, Carmesita and Daisy, all playfully giving us thumbs down and sticking their tongues out. I eat a big chunk of cheddar without breaking eye contact to show them just how serious I am. The final category is... Cool animals. Animals, huh? I could never take care of another living thing. Hell, I can barely take care of myself. Haha, <laughs> I'm falling apart. Anyways, here's the question. The Canary Isles were named after what kind of animal? Dogs. That's right. Time to run errands. Glad to catch your stream, Cerny. See ya. Yeah, thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. What is the last animal that appears in the dictionary? This weevil. Correct. What mammal has the thickest concentration of fur in nature? An otter. Correctamundo. All right, I'm just gonna come around and collect your scorecards and we'll see who's on top. Remember, the winning team gets a $25 gift card to Phil, Phil's Auto Care. If you need a car part, Phil's will fulfill all your needs. Everyone oohs and ahs. God, I want that gift card. The quiz master goes back to tally up the score. I pick up uh, what's left of our cheese plate. There's a bit of brie here that tastes absolutely divine on a cracker with a little bit of honey and dried apricot. Ah. So what are your plans after our big win? Hmm, probably retire. Take a man to somewhere tropical. Drink something out of a coconut. Always wanted to do that. What about you? Probably take my winnings to Colin's, Colin's gambling ring. Put it all on black. Walk out of there with even more rubber bands in the shape of animals than I know what to do with. Bold, but I like your style. Ah. You want the last piece of her body? Nah, that's all you. You definitely earned it. After a couple of minutes, the quiz master jogs back into the room. Everyone immediately quiets down, waiting for baited, with bated breath for the results. Who will win the coveted gift card? I really hope it's us. Hey, everybody. We've had another great night. Lots of goofs, lots of laughs, a little bit of light crying in the back. But that's neither here nor there. By a landslide, the winner of tonight's contest is... Easy Breezy Beautiful! Woo! Eggplants! Eggplants! Come on down and get your gift card for Phil's Auto Care, where Phil... Nominal, ser nominal service is... God, I can't do this anymore. Please just take the gift card. I motion for Hugo to get the gift card, and he shyly slinks to the booth to grab it. He pauses for the moment and gives... Quizmaster a hug with a few pats on the back. Aww. Quizmaster sobs just a little. Oh. Hugo takes a victory lap to her table and gives me a high five. Easy Breezy Beautiful is unstoppable. Easy Breezy Beautiful is great. May Easy Breezy Beautiful reign for a thousand years. Hey, great work, you guys. You guys did awesome. Uh. Will we be seeing Easy Breezy Beautiful again next week? I look over at Hugo, who smiles. Maybe so. You make a pretty good team, huh, Hugo? Oh. Hugo blushes. Cute. Hugo and I walk back to our cul-de-sac, basking in the glow of our wind and nursing our cheese-filled bellies. Man, we crushed it there. Hey! Finally enduring the screams of young children for years on end has paid off. I will take my half of this gift card and use it to purchase many, many air fresheners for my car, which Ernest refuses to stop vaping in. I think I'll... Oh, dry mouth, dry mouth. I think I'll use my half to buy at least two tire pressure gauges and place... 
to place with boot to place in different parts of my garage. You never know when you're gonna need one, and I prefer to have them within arm's reach. A fine plan. Shame about that one wrestling question, though. Hmm. I'm not kidding. I plan to write a strongly worded letter to whoever employed that man. Come on. There's gotta be a story there. Hmm. What do you mean? You didn't even stop to think. You pulled that wrestling knowledge out like you were there at the ring yourself. Was he a wrestler at one point? Oh my gosh, was he a wrestler? Uh, ask again. Hold on. You know, I figured you'd be better at lying after dealing with every kid in school for as long as you have. I, uh, it, it's embarrassing. Ask again. You know it's actually embarrassing? Not being able to explain basic algebra to your daughter. <laughs> you know it's definitely not embarrassing? Knowing stuff about wrestling. Hugo says. Um. <laughs> alright, alright. If you really want to know, just follow me. Hugo leads you to his house on the edge of a cul-de-sac. We step inside and his house is exactly what I expected it to be. Neat and filled top to, top to bottom with books and art. Hey. Hey, welcome to my home. Sorry it's so messy. His house is actually pretty spotless. I follow him down the hallway. What are we doing? Hugo opens the door and ushers me inside. It's pitch black. He closes the door behind us. Oh. That's a lot of wrestling. God damn. That's an uh, absurd amount of wrestling. Hugo flips the switch and I finally understand. Curio cabinets packed with inbox wrestling action figures line the walls, along with posters, cardboard cutouts, and every piece of wrestling memorabilia imaginable. A giant widescreen TV sits on a decked out media stand. I'm speechless. I look over at Hugo, who's hovering by the door, doing everything to avoid eye contact. Eh. It's, uh, this is really embarrassing. Uh, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Oh, wow. Not a lot of people have seen this, huh? This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Are you kidding? Look at all this stuff. This have taken you forever to collect. Can I touch this? Go ahead. I pick up one of his replica championship belts and toss it over my shoulder. Do you smell what I'm cooking? Mm -hmm. I think the line is, it's meatballs. Sorry, I don't watch a lot of wrestling. Ah. Oh, uh, yeah, I um, really, really like wrestling. He's blushing so hard right now. Cute. Hugo, you brought the wrong kind of pizza rolls again. Ernest just got home. He's yelling in from the hallway. I can see Hugo immediately deflate. Oh. I told you this pizza rolls have less sodium. I just want you to be healthy, son. Tries to get son healthy pizza rolls. Ernest comes into Hugo's wrestling room and looks around with disgust. He notices me and scoffs. I thought nobody was allowed in your precious wrestling room. I never said that. I just said you weren't allowed to take action figures out of their boxes and pose them so that they're having sex with each other. Ernest gets flustered. Yeah, well, whatever. I'm gonna go throw eggs at stuff. Have fun with your stupid wrestling crap. Ernest leaves, then a moment later pops his head back into the room. And your stupid friend. Hey, that stupid boyfriend to you. Ernest storms back out of the room. I hear a door slam. Hugo rarely runs his hands through his hair. <sighs> He's just, Hugo's just so freaking cute. Sorry about him. And I'm sorry I have to keep apologizing about him. He's just going through a phase, I guess. Hmm. I try so hard to impress him, but it's obvious that no matter what I do, he hates me. Ernest has a thing against authority figures, and you don't get much more authorita authoritative than a teacher dad. My ex, he gets to be the fun weekend dad, and I'm just Hugo who makes Ernest eat his vegetables and turn in his homework on time. 
Oh. That's so sad, though. <laughs> that makes me actually sad. Poor Hugo. I want to know more about his ex. That's interesting to me. Hey, you love him and you're looking out for his best interests. Take it from one dad to another. Someday he'll come to appreciate you. Maybe not someday soon, but someday. I hope so. Ah. Thanks for letting me vent. Hugo glances at his watch. Hmm. Suppose it's getting kind of late. Let's do trivia again sometime soon. I would absolutely love to. I start to leave. And hey, thanks for showing me your wrestling stuff. Maybe you can tell me some more stuff about it next time. Hugo smiles. Ah. That would be amazing. I'll catch you around. It only takes me a minute to walk back home. Amanda's sitting on the couch reading a book about female photographers. Wow, I thought you didn't like reading. Huh. I don't. This book is all pictures. Ugh. And even then, my patience is being tried. Aww. Did you get to eat all your cheese your little heart desired? And my happy little cheese monster. But I made sure to leave room for dinner. Who wants breakfast for dinner? Yeah. Hash browns! Okay. Hey. Toast dipped in egg. All right. Ha. Blueberry pancakes! Well, only if you help me make them. <laughs> You know I'm the world's best blueberry sprinkler, and also totally amazing at heating up the maple syrup in the microwave. Now tell me all about that cheese board. Amanda, I, Amanda and I spend the evening cooking an elaborate breakfast with everything we can find inside of the fridge. I tell her all about the trivia, but leave out the parts where Hugo's being into wrestling. I figured she would probably find some nefarious way to use that information for a better grade. Take complete! Youth. I'm yes. JK rolling with delight. Oh. Jesus. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass the room, I can hear a faint sound. But I can't quite make what it is. I get a little closer. Is she... crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strained. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> no, not my baby! No! No. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed. Knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Hmm. Hmm. Let me think on this one. Hmm. I don't want I'm like looking to see what other people say and they're like, how to unlock her bad ending. I'm like, I don't want to unlock her bad ending. Why would you ever want the bad ending? Why do you want to be a shit dad? Okay. I know what I must do. Did something happen? Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Something must have happened. Amanda, Aww. get out. Okay, okay. <laughs> I quickly leave her room and shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I can hear her crying again. Wow. What is her so upset? She seems fine earlier. She's usually so open with me. Did I do something wrong? Is she mad at me? I guess if she wasn't before, she definitely is now. I can't even remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. 
About 10 minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen water waffle. Frozen water. Frozen waffle in the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? Mm. No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster level up and I see her still freezer burned waffle out before she... And pulls the toaster lever up and takes her still freezer burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh. Eww, yikes. Oh, okay. Haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on the wall. In it, I'm teaching her how to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knee, she would get up and try again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I pulled, put the bike away, she stood up in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing ever happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin? What? Can you come here for a second? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just... Whatever it is, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. But whatever it is, just know you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Oh. Aww. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language you both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad. Oh! Sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. No, it's too cute. Oh my god. Hold on. Give me one sec. I gotta save this picture. It's too cute. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere and sad and had to start over and <laughs> this is beautiful. It's strawberry. It might have gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve up some delicious cake. So it's really stupid. What is? The whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just, I don't know how to even explain it. I feel like I have to make you out a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Uh. I guess I should start from the top. So, you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. Which one's Emma R? Fuck. Hey, stop barking. It's been like a week since I played this and I can't remember who Emma R is. Stop barking at me. Okay. MR is the one she's been friends with since she was little. The one who picked a dead bath goth and beyond, the best friend, or the other one. Best friend. Hey! You got it. Wow, proud of you. Yeah, because I looked it up. Huh. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, she's been feeling like I've been feeling like she's been drifting away, you know? 
She's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas and Grace and Noah all went to a party at Mackenzie F's. On the same night, they all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. Yikes. Uh. So, another important piece of information is, uh, God, this is so embarrassing. Um, I have a crush on Noah, and that's a thing. What? Whoa, I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Uh -huh. <laughs> Anyways, so the only person I told about the crush was MR. She promised not to tell anyone. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama. So I just kept quiet and kept doing my business. Amanda sighs. And then one day I invite everybody to go get nachos at the mall. And after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than like 60 seconds, they all say they're busy. Like simultaneously. This makes me sad. <laughs> like, I, I, I've definitely been there and it's not fun. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips and I really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. Ugh. So I go to the mall anyways. I go to the food court and who do I see there? Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah. All hanging out together and eating nachos without me. Uh, hello two Hello Kitty hydrates. Drink up, bitch, they said. You know what? Fair. My voice is very dry. <laughs> okay, here's one. Ugh. Okay, here's two. <sighs> oh, no, another one. Okay. No, another one. Fuck. Ugh. Three and four. Ugh. Thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Do you all like my little Miku figure, by the way? I like it. Eventually, I will probably draw my own, but I kind of like that it's just like an actual figure. <laughs> They're all eating nachos. Without me. What? Mm. It gets better. I'm standing by the escalator watching him, and I realize that Noah has his armor and Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. <laughs> yes, I know. So I storm over there and I'm like, hey, and Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does. And MR just like glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the, uh, which one's Grace? Gossipy one. We got this. I know. Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or I guess that's me now. Fuck. That's a little too... That hits close to home. But anyway, nobody will say anything. I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say. But I was very angry. And really embarrassed. And I just wanted to get out of there. So I left. Without nachos. My dad. Which only further can... Oh my god, my darts are barking. Hush! Damn, y'all. Which only further contributed to the shitty day. And I'm immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to MR asking how long the Noah and R thing have been... What? The Noah thing's been going on and... Sorry, I know this is a lot. Are you still following? What did MR say? I'm a little confused, but I think I understand, or I have no idea what's happening. What did MR say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. MR says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Oh no, that's never a good sign when someone's like, actually, let me just read you the text they sent me. Like, that's how you know it's some real bullshit. And Amanda pulls out her phone and reads word for word, and our duvely, art, artistly long string of text messages. Can you believe that? I can't believe that. 
I cannot believe that. I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. Uh -huh. They were dating for secret. The ugh, What the fuck? They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she's been a real terrible friend and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on red. And then, wait, left me on red? Well, what's that? Oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know because there are red read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm going to nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to MP about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable. And I'm venting to her about how pissed I am everybody uh, am at everybody and stuff. <laughs> And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? Then he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything. And to I told the group chat that I, what? Everything. And I told her to, wait, sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. This is really sad. Like, this is really sad. I don't like this. All right, I think he lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. Uh. There's so much more, but honestly, it's just all really stupid teenager stuff. Dismiss. It, it's just mean. They're just bullying her for no reason. The bottom line is that everyone dropped me, half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Felt. Really felt. Yeah, I feel that. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everyone else, but... Uh. Emma R has been there since Dad died. I can't believe she would just... stab me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like... What did I do wrong? Why did everyone suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Oh, God. Oof. Ouch. Oof. Ouch. It hurts. Hurts me in my relatability. Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected, I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Oh, no. Anyways, that's it. It's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. It's kind of dumb. Er, it's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like this is my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Not all friendships last forever. Uh, real friends don't do that. High school sucks. Um. Hmm. Let me think. Hmm. There, is there a, even a guide for Amanda? Let me see. Um, no, there's just straight up no guide for Amanda. Fuck. Oh well.
Um, let's see. Real friends don't do that. High school sucks. Um, high school sucks. Honey, high school sucks. You made friends with people just because they're... Is there sound to the game, by the way, or music? If so, I can't really hear it. There's no sound right now. Because it's a serious moment. You make friends with people just because they're there. When you're still living in your hometown, there's a pretty small pool of people to choose from. But once you go to college, once you get out of there into the real world, you're going to be exposed to all sorts of people. And it's going to be easier to make friends with people who really get you. Some of those friendships can last a lifetime. I mean, look at me and Craig. And some of them only last a little while. That's okay, too. You're going to make so many awesome new friends at art school. That's very true. That's very good advice. Like, once I went to college, suddenly my life... Things got harder, but a lot of my social things got easier. Because now I could actually, like, choose who... I had more, like, autonomy over who I interacted with, you know? Like, I didn't have to... I didn't have to be friends with mean people anymore. Or I didn't have to interact with, like, people who bullied me anymore, you know? So, like, I don't know. College is great. Go to college. College is wonderful. I had a great college experience. Ultimately, I think this is way more about their character than it does about yours. Because you're pretty amazing. And if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. Huh. I'll keep that in mind. I'll look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Huh. Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up and goes to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. Hey, Pops? Yes? Ah. Thank you. You're always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. Oh! <laughs> so cute. I love you too, Dad. That's so sweet. Welcome. You've got dads. You got dads. Softy, did you know there was a whole scene where you go and get ice cream? But you can only get it if you read this message. And then you get to hang out with Robert while you get ice cream. I never had that- I never had that, uh, come up for me before. I don't know if you did it, but I'm just saying. I'm interested. Let's see what this is. Hello, Amanda's dad. It's me, your friend Craig, who loves sports. I have nice and smart children who are good at computers. Never got a message from- It's not from Robert. It's actually- It's actually from yourself in the past. And then you happen to run into Robert while you're getting ice cream. But basically, like, you have, like, an automated message from yourself uh, in the past telling you to go get ice cream. So you go out and get ice cream, and then Ernest, like, tries to get you to buy vape juice for him, and he gets arrested, and Robert saves him. I have nice and smart children who are good at computers. Ah, oh, man, great to hear from you, buddy. What's up? What is that noise? Oh, my God. That scared me. I'm still strong. Strong. I am strong. Haha, <laughs> don't I know it. I never got a message from the past either. I wonder, is it like route specific or does it just randomly happen? Because that's kind of cool. Say, I've been reading up about whey protein. You use that at all? I figured it'd help me develop a bit more muscle. Yes, I know what that is. My children are having a tea party and they wanted to invite Amanda, but we can't find her on here. You're also invited. Physical invitation to follow. Cool, I'd love to come. I'll let Amanda know. Thank you, Amanda's dad. Attend the party. Did you get this message from Craig to attend a tea party together? Hmm, attend that party. No tea party? What the fuck? Coffee time! You know dads love coffee. Gonna brew myself something black as midnight on a moonless night. I put in a fresh pot and work on a few word jumbles while I wait for it to brew. 
Hey, this one spells sorrow. Dad, ready for the day? I'm ready for every day, sweetie. Gonna tackle it head on. No, are you ready for the thing that we're gonna do today? The thing that you promised we'd do. Honey, I already told you that I'm not gonna throw away my Tom Clancy novels. They're just stacked in the living room. I keep bumping into them and knocking them over and you don't even read them. Wait, no, that's not what I'm here about. The tea party, dad. Nope, I don't remember that. Craig's kids, that hand-drawn invitation. Amanda walks over to the refrigerator and comes back with a hand-drawn invitation on a sheet of computer paper, inviting Amanda and Amanda's dad to a tea party. They've spelled cordially wrong. Cordially wrong. Just put on some going outside pants and let's get going. Can I go outside in sweatpants? I can go outside in sweatpants. Nothing's <sighs> stopping me. Dad, just... Ugh, fine. I'll see you in a minute. Put on going outside pants or fuck authority. Uh, put on pants, damn it. Huh. Hello, and thank you for coming to our tea party. I do my best to bow and present my daughter, who thanks them with a curtsy. This way, please. Brian and Hazel leads us to a small table with tiny chairs. Some are occupied by stuffed animals, and Matt and his daughter, Carmesita, are here, too. Matt raises a comically small plastic teacup at me. Hey, dude. How's the tea? Hey. The imaginary tea is absolutely wonderful. I taste, a hint, I taste a hint of lemongrass. Hello, Carmesita. Hello, Mr. Amanda's dad. Oh. Please, have a seat. What is it? No, it's Lace. Our last name is Lace. That's what I put it as. I sit down between Amanda and Matt. Mm. I don't think I'm going to be able to get out of this chair. Oh. Hi, everybody. Hi. I turn to see Daisy and Brian enter into the backyard and take a seat next to us. Is this table big enough for all these people? Sorry. Sorry we're late. Daisy me put on my going outside pants. See, Amanda? Or let it go. See, Amanda? Mm. Amanda gives me a knowing look, and I return an... Obli obligating wink. She rolls her eyes. <sighs> Is that really something your daughter had to pressure you into, Brian? I give Amanda another even more exaggerated wink. She rolls her eyes even harder. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules for some high tea. Now if you all put on your designated tiaras... <laughs> There's a little tiara sitting on everyone's plate, except for Brian's. His is a, a softball helmet. Oh, we ran out of tiaras. Uh -huh. I don't think this is gonna fit me, but I appreciate the thought. Dad, you're royalty. Please act like Whoa. it. Brian tries to balance the ill-fitting softball helmet on top of his head, but it immediately tumbles off and into the bushes. Ugh. <coughs> <coughs> I'll get that later. Hey, everybody. Craig comes out with a teapot and a tray of sandwich cookies. Dad, is the tea ready? Er, yeah, it's been um, seeping for a while now. Awesome. Would you girls like to serve your guest tea? No, thank you. We'd much appreciate our servant's help. Craig leans over to me. That's me. Craig places teacups in front of all of us and a single sandwich cookie under each of our plates. He pours us some tea into the cup. Hmm. Awfully fluorescent tea. I clink my teacup to Matt's and take a sip. Hey, uh... Good lemonade. It's tea. Hey. Right. Very good tea. I lean over to Amanda, who's happily enjoying her tea. So, what do we do at tea parties? Mm. We enjoy the splendors of upper-class society, Father. She takes a dainty bite of her sandwich cookie. <laughs> Marvelous. So, the meeting of princesses have been called to order. Hear, hear. But I'm a warrior princess. I hunt stuff, and I have, like, a really cool sword. Mm. Can I be a space princess? I'll allow it. And I'll be a rock star princess. I'm also a space princess. Can there be more than one? Mm. Space is pretty big, don't you think? I changed my mind. I want to be a space princess, too. Mm. Dad, what are you? Do I get to be a princess? Duh. Well, I guess that makes me... Ooh, History Channel princess, hacker princess, rude boy princess. 
Rude boy princess. If I drop my crown on the floor, I'll make sure to pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Nice. Ah. I think I'll be a landscaper and general contracting princess. Oh. Barista princess, reporting for duty. Hey. Hey, everyone. Crossfoot princess here. Not now, servant. Oh. If it wasn't, if it weren't for the princess uprising, it would be you serving me. We sip tea for a little longer, and the girls turn off to fight dinosaurs with space rock star warrior princess. I think space rock star warrior princess. They grow up so fast. It was like yesterday I was helping Amanda throw her own tea parties. Did she make you a servant too? You betcha. Carmesita made me actually brew tea for hers. Pitfalls of owning a coffee shop. Oh. Pitfall. Your custom blends are amazing. That hibiscus one you gave me a while back was choice. Hey. Aw, uh, thanks. Hey. It's really nice the girls are getting along. Yeah, I'm really glad we moved into this community. Hey. We are too. Amanda's been kind of a role model to them, you know. I haven't even realized. I don't even know if Amanda does either, but I guess they're right. All the girls in the neighborhood look up to her. She seems to go out of her way to play with them. I'm so proud of her. Oh! You better not proud dad cry at this tea party, Serenity. You can't stop me. I bought extra word jumbles if anyone wants to kill some time while the girls play. The day rolls on and the girls get all tuckered out. Amanda spends the whole day playing with them and taking their pictures, promising that she'll send them the best ones later. We all clean up and help put away the tea sets and tables, then head out as Daisy and Carmesy to fall asleep on their dad's shoulders. Aww. Oh. Take care, guys. Thanks for coming. Bye, rude boy princess. Ooh. You want dinner? <laughs> nah, I filled up on cookies. Me too, I'm tired. Ooh. Dude, same. Playing with a bunch of little kids who all simultaneously want your attention and approval is surprisingly exhausting. Mm. But in a good way? Also in kind of a scary way. How so? Oh. I feel like I gotta be on my best behavior for them. I don't wanna let them down. Is that because you still feel bad about dropping the F-bomb in front of your cousin that one time? Huh? I corrupted her dead. She secondhand smokes now. Well, those kids really look up to you. And I'm glad you have they have you as a role model. Hmm. Shucks, Pops. I ruffle Amanda's hair. Aw. That was so Welcome. cute! You we're got a, dads. We're on a little tea party. Aw. That's precious. Well, it is time. Let's switch to this. Okay, everyone. I very thirsty. <laughs> um, so I think I'm going to stop here today. I got work pretty soon too. So I will stop here for a day and take a goddamn nap. Drink some honey lemonade or something. But thank you all for joining me today. It really means a lot. Um, even though I was late. <laughs> and like loopy for the first hour. Uh... But yeah, thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. I will make the schedule before Wednesday this time. Thanks for dropping my socials. I have a Twitter, YouTube, and Discord. And thank you again, Baguette, for reminding my stupid dumbass to put my Twitch in my profile. Ugh. I'll, I'll figure out a way to make it look nice, uh, to put my, to fit my Discord in my profile as well. Um, but yeah. Let's see. This is what we're gonna do for a raid. This is what you say at a raid. Stinky time, baby. And then, let me copy and copy that. Let's see who we're gonna raid. Who are we gonna raid? Who's streaming? Uh... Let's see. Let let get them let's get them channel points. Yeah. Let's read Cardi Hestia. She's a really cute like housewife, like soft cottage ish uh Gorgon. She's really cute. She's playing Divinity Original Sin right now, so let's 
Head over there, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get them channel points. And thank you again so much for joining us. Time to raid!